those who are joining us via Facebook or on the website. I do want to say thank you to Rhonda and Derek and Jesse and myself. We gave out harvesters food on Friday and there were 90, was it about 90? 90 family, 100? 100 unit, family units so that we gave food to. So thank you very much for um, all that work as well as our community. Uh, if you want to watch or listen to KMD1 radio, and I'm not sure of the schedule, home for the holiday, or you're going back to doing an old style radio show as we come through Christmas through this season. And I'm on there sometime. I can't remember. I don't know when. I never heard the schedule. But just know that um, we are telling the Christmas story on that radio station. Uh, to all those who want to listen to that, so we give thanks for that. Also, continue to uh, hang with us as we come through Hanukkah. We are on tonight, will be night four of Hanukkah, and we're learning more about it on Facebook Live and then on the website as well. Um, please join us as we do understand, try to learn a little bit about our Jewish friends and really our roots, um, about where we come from and how, how and why this season of life for them is so important, but it is another season of life as well. The third candle on our Advent wreath is, really talks about that. It is a pink candle normally, and it is the joy candle. It's about it building the excitement as the holiday approaches. So listen to Luke. But the angel reassured them, don't be afraid. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The angels made a big announcement on that first Christmas calling Jesus for good news that would bring great joy. Everything we do to get ready for Christmas can fill us with the joy about, Christmas, about Jesus. When we're joyful, we like the angels can help spread the good news. Let us pray. Dear God, we pray for the joy that is found in Jesus, that those who seek it may truly find it. May we celebrate in the joy found in you. Amen. Let us stand as we begin with our confession. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a call and ordained servant of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We'll sing, uh, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus in the Gold Book, 168.
and all, let us pray to the Lord. Where this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend this gracious Lord. Do not 
quench the spirit. Do not despise the word of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. Here I am. Please stand.
are, O oh Jesus, Word of God. Our infinite minds can only begin to comprehend your infinite wonders. Our words can never aptly reflect who you are as the divine Word. You are before all things. Through you all things are created. By your light all things are seen. Your fellowship with the Father surpasses all other intimacies. Indeed, you are God. Yet you have become human. You have become like us. The incomprehensible has become known. The eternal has taken on temporality. The Creator has joined the creation. The light has entered the darkness. You have done all this so that us mortals might see your glory, the very glory of God, so that we might know the Father, so that we might receive grace and truth. What a wonder! What a mystery! How glorious you are, O oh Word of God. Amen. You know, as I read this, John is coming as a witness ahead of. He needed to prepare the way of the Lord because things were uncertain. Again, we're not sure that maybe people had it right yet. Maybe there needed to be a little foreshadowing to understand what this awesome Jesus was going to do and what freedom there would be in his grace and his love. So John comes ahead to testify concerning the light so that all men might believe. As I think about the light, we think about Hanukkah. We think about how those stories of the light don't fit into each other. We find out and we hear so much about the joy and the peace and the hope and the love that there is. As we go through Hanukkah for these eight days, remember it's about the rededication of the temple and yet the miracle that the oil lasts for eight days. And it shouldn't have. And yet it did. And the Jewish people celebrate. It's not a somber day. It's like us getting ready for Christmas. It's a joy of anticipation. It's on the third night. Remembering that they ate fried foods a lot of it. It's totally unhealthy. But of course it was olive oil. So of course it was healthy oil that they would have shared in. And eating lockies and pancakes and all sorts of good things. Having guilt, having chocolate, that's the best part maybe. Of remembering the stories of old. And yet the season of light is about hope and joy and peace. And I love the Hanukkah song that tells the story of the freedom that was let loose in the people's story as their story was being played out and as it's told every year in these eight days. For us, it's the same joy and it's they're fighting for the same thing. The joy of being able to tell the story of light and hope and peace. It's the joy, hope, peace, love that's on our Advent read being played out. And John is the forerunner to say, get ready. There's something remarkable about to happen. I'm not worthy to really do everything. Yes, I'm going to be baptizing, but I, can, I can't do what he does. I can't do it. Because it is his to tell the rest of the story. On this third Sunday of Advent, hopefully by now, we've gotten a little more excited about what is happening. And it's not just the same old thing. I know this year I changed how we did some things. We changed some things here at church as well. How we do things had to be modified for a lot of reasons. And yet, Maybe the joy that we had at the beginning of December was pretty low. The energy was pretty low. And we were all kind of moaning and groaning about what 
and how was it going to look? And what do we do? And I've seen the energy pick up and people are getting a little more excited about what's happening. Little Lily that we have been praying for, who still has her leukemia, yesterday there were pictures put on. She was thumbs up, as much as you can see a thumbs up in a snowsuit and mittens, sitting out in the snow, playing with a grin and a smile as big as it could get. That's the energy and the joy this season is to bring. And she, Lily is, little Lily is getting ready for it. There was a picture of her putting her favorite ornament on the tree. You know, the Ricky Cameron, they weren't sure what this Christmas was going to look like. None of us knew. Could it have been one that was sad and you can do a sigh. You know, this one's going to be a happy one for them. A happy one because she has doing better. Although it is a sad one. We have to admit for the Reinhardt family, for the Turner family, for the Rasmussen family, for all those families, this is a hard Christmas and a hard advent to maybe be in because there's little joy. And yet, I think we also need to say it might be in some ways a truly faith-filled Christmas and a holiday saying, God is so good. Yes, my family is not with us, but they're at home celebrating their first Christmas with the king sitting at that feast table, enjoying and having that as their feast. See, John is only trying to prepare us for the future, to prepare us for what will be. Jesus will come and will baptize. Jesus will be baptized, even though he didn't need to be. John reluctantly baptized Jesus. And yet, for you and me, this Advent is a time of light as we light more candles on the reef. It gets brighter and more hope-filled. Not maybe so gloomy. You know, I chuckled as I was doing the Hanukkah last night. I had to tell everyone we would be doing Hanukkah at 5 o'clock instead of 6 o'clock. Because today we had to do Advent at church. Then I was going to go home and at 5 o'clock do Hanukkah so that I could go do Christmas program at 7. And I started thinking about the juxtaposition of doing all three things in one day. And how amazing it is to be able to do that. How awesome is God that we get to tell the story multiple times? That we actually are living the story of Jesus? And where are we at? Are we going to be gloomy, gloomy, boo, boo, boo? Or do we want to say, God is so good that we get fired up about the stories of old? See, we can't really be excited about Christmas unless we are willing to invite others into this story and into the journey with us. We invite people out to dinner, maybe not so often right now. We invite people to be part of many things that we do. But do we invite people into faith and into growing a story together? Do we invite people to see the glory and the wonder and the mystery that there is in the midst of it. John is preparing the way. You and I are preparing the way for others to enter into this story. Preparing others to come along in the journey with us. That's why I love when I preparing like the Hanukkah stuff, and I keep coming up with something new, or I write another article and I go, oh, wow, that is so cool. Or I can make it, I have a sermon ready. 
And God says, well, maybe not. Maybe you're going to go a different direction than what you thought. Now, I have to tell you, yesterday was kind of an interesting day. I was out doing, making some deliveries of, of bread to some of our members. I found another road that you should not go down, especially if it's money. Well, I tried. Well, I didn't get totally stuck. I was mostly stuck, though, kind of. I finally manipulated it, backing up and driving forward and putting it into a lower gear when I finally got turned around and I got back out and I thought, well, that's another one of those roads I'm not going down again. I think the name of that road is Harvest Road. You don't want to go down it. I've now found it twice from both ends and it doesn't work. Not if it's muddy. Not if it's wet. You know, and I chuckled as I was coming back out of it and finally got on pavement because I thought, isn't this the path that sometimes God sends us on? Because I kept thinking, okay, who am I going to call? Because I might be stuck, and I'm really not exactly sure where I'm at. But I'm along here somewhere, and I think I'm on Harvest Road, but I'm not sure. And so how am I going to get out of this mess? Well, I, I got out. But isn't that what God often does to us? He kind of sends us down a path maybe that we go, man, I don't know if this is where I should be. And he either turns us or he keeps us on it because that is the path we need to be on. And I think John was doing that. John had to go down a path and prepare the way. Well, it's for you and me, too. We are preparing the way for others who will follow us in our imperfect journey, the imperfect world that we live in. God's taking us where he needs us to go. Now, I don't know that I'm going to go on Harvest Road again. I probably will not now that I've been on both ends, and it's not good either way. But anyway, God is preparing through you and me, the way that we need to tell the story, that we need to unfold it. As I had conversations this week with Dick Reinhardt, I had the most awesome conversations about Larry. And we laughed over some of the stories. See, because Dick didn't know when before this whole pandemic thing, I'd gone to see Larry one visit. I was going to give him communion and have my have a chat with him and that kind of thing. And I got him in the activity room. And they were bouncing the ball back and forth to each other. Hey, Larry, you want to come out and have communion? No. Okay, you sit and play ball. Okay, I got my marching orders. I had to sit and play ball. Until Larry was done with that, and then we could. When I told Dick that story, all he could do was laugh. He's like, that is so Larry. That is so who he was. So Larry. So faithful. Yes. He's, he's left this place. But he's home. Just like Jackie and Carol. They are home with the king. They are at the manger scene. They're going to see firsthand, again, that birth retold by the king himself. Oh, yes. So tonight, we'll do Hanukkah and then we'll do a Christmas program. Oh, yeah. God, you got this plan just as you did for John the Baptist. Just as you did. He is not, and he never declared to be the Messiah. He never said he was a prophet. All John was was a servant called and set aside. Just as you and I are all called and set aside to be the witnesses of the story that's unfolding. 
of the story that is manifest in all that we do. That's all this is about. It's a story of old that is now for you and me. Amen. And we will sing hymn number 36. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for 
for all who struggle with health issues. We hold Stan and Lois, Larry and all others who struggle with COVID, cancer, or all other diseases. We also pray for all who care for our brothers and sisters. Give them peace and calmness in the midst of anxiety. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, we lift up the family of Larry Reinhardt and ask that you hold them close. We know Larry has come home to you, but know that families grieve. Hold them in this time, Lord, in your mercy. And God, for our congregations and congregations throughout the world, continue to give us peace and willingness to listen. Help us as we struggle at times to know how to move. God, be with all your children in this day and this time. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, you are an amazing God who opened us. You have prepared us to lead the way. You've given us the courage and the words and the strength for us to move forward. To be the light in the darkness. Be with us this day through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us come together and pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated as we receive our offering.
now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.